Hey everyone, Evan Kerstell. Happy Monday. I have a great guest in one of my favorite topics of contact center and CX, Sid Rao, GM of Amazon China SDK at AWS Cloud. Sid, how are you? Good. How are you, Evan? I'm really Thank well. We followed.、Me. Yeah, thanks for being here, especially on a Monday.、Um, we followed each other on social media for some time, and I've watched your developments as a kind of industry observer with great interest in the contact center. But、um, let's do with some introductions.、Uh, you've been at Amazon for quite some time. Maybe introduce yourself and your role、sure. at AWS. Sure.、Uh, so I've been with Amazon for about eight and a half years.、Uh, I started out、uh, running our real-time communication services for Amazon.com and、uh, serving everything from how to get a text message out to a retail customer when they're purchasing something to sending emails out to saying your order has been completed.、Uh, after that, I've grown up and worked in AWS,、uh, primarily owning our communication services and communication capabilities that we offer to enterprise customers and independent software vendors. So. Uh, that's how I have now come to lead the Amazon China SDK team here at AWS. That's fantastic, and you, it's been a long journey—eight years at Amazon. That's like several lifetimes. What have you observed over the last、uh, few years in terms of the evolution of of real time communications within AWS? And also, maybe speak to what your solution, Amazon China SDK, actually entails. Sure, absolutely. So,、uh, from an evolution perspective. The company has grown immensely.、Uh, we also had that two-year period. Two, we still have it going on, but that COVID nineteen period, which、oh, obviously that,、yeah. changed the way. Only that, which obviously changed the way that communications, what you know, worked and the priority and the importance of it within Amazon as a company,、uh, and also within our customers. And so, you know, it's really accelerated the communication revolution for and and digital engagement revolution for most of our customers. So. Uh, in fact, that's the genesis of where the Amazon China SDK came from. Was it was、uh, basically created to help our customers with their digital engagement journey, with their conversational AI problems, with their agent assistance issues,、um, and how they can basically digitally transform their enterprise or or software application、uh, with communications. So that's actually how the SDK CERT came about, which is. Basically, a set of building blocks to add communication capabilities to web or mobile or desktop application.、Um, we also support constructs like creating, a, you know, a IVR or a conversational AI mechanism for telephone systems.、Uh, we also support a concept of programmable voice or the ability to dynamically route calls across、uh, to various different destinations based around customer data.、Um, so basically, we've created a A rich communications platform with many machine learning capabilities, actually,、uh, that our customers can use to add communication capabilities to their apps, digitally transform their enterprise customer experience, and、uh, we have a number of customers like a Slack or a T-Mobile using the platform and, and are quite successful today with the SDK. That is fantastic, and that's a lot to bite off in a few seconds. Maybe talk about those customers in some more color. Uh, in detail, and how they're working with you, and some of the business and technical value they get from your team、sure. in particular, beyond just the cloud, of course. Sure, absolutely. So Slack、uh, has a feature within、uh, their application called Slack Huddles. Slack Huddles allows、uh, basically a real-time audio space and video space now for people to collaborate, associate with the channel. Um, it has live transcription, so you can literally just be watching the conversation. You don't have to listen to it,、um, kind of in almost in an asynchronous manner.、Uh, and you know, content share is very easy to do across the channel, so you can do screen share and, and various different other collaboration constructs associated with the Slack channel. Well, the Huddles product is built on the SDK, so we power the infrastructure to make Huddles successful. Um, and what we did was we took away that undifferentiated heavy lifting that Slack had to do to pass and process audio and video streams across the globe. We handle that in our platform, and it's a pay-as-you-go, pay-for-what-you-use style platform. So we're deployed in 18 AWS regions across the globe to support Slack, and we provide a low-latency audio and video service with. Machine learning to remove background noise and echo and various different other you know, artifacts from the audio, 
And it really allowed Slack to accelerate the development of huddles because they didn't have to worry about the infrastructure anymore of how to send and pass those audio and video streams across the globe. We took care of that for them. And they had to, they could focus on the application and the customer experience, which is why Slack huddles, to quote their chief uh, product officer, is, you know, uh, is actually one of their most successful features that they've ever launched within Slack. It's used by millions of daily active users across the globe. T-Mobile, on the other hand, uh, they use the product for a very different use case. So they have a contact center. It's a, it's a Cisco-based contact center that serves about 60,000 agents across the United States today. They wanted to offer uh, agent assistance uh, or the ability to help an agent in real time, give suggestions to them that come from their knowledge base. And what they're using the SDK for there, and this is a very different use case than Slack. What they're doing in, in their particular use case is they're taking the audio that's coming from their existing context on our platform, trans using our platform to transcribe it. Um, and then the transcripts are then with machine learning. And then the transcripts are then basically used to search their knowledge base for relevant articles and suggestions they can give to agents. And then they're popping these agent suggestions onto their, you know, their finesse desktop if they're a Cisco customer. We have a number of customers who do that, actually. Real-time agent assistance is a obviously a, a very important thing, at, especially post-COVID with so, so much growth in the contact center space and with agents working from home. And being able to achieve those artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities with their existing contact center uh, is important because a lot of customers aren't willing to go through some of the switching costs that are associated with changing out their contact center to achieve some of those new capabilities. So that's what T-Mobile is doing. Hopefully I'm giving you some good content about what Slack and T-Mobile are doing with Slack. No, it's been fantastic. And I, I had no idea that you were sort of invisibly powering some of these great services behind the scenes, a little bit of the best kept, well, not secret, but but definitely technologies out there that that maybe aren't top of mind. And tell us, is the platform open to all developers? I, I imagine you have a lot of startups and unicorns and other types of companies, uh, you, know, you know, leveraging these capabilities as well. Absolutely. You just need an AWS account to use our service. Uh, our APIs are public and our the software development kits we provide for web and mobile apps, that's also on GitHub. So we do actually quite a bit of work in the open source. Um, and it's all standards based as well. So it works within a browser, for example, if you're powering browser communications, um, SIP based, if you're doing integrations with existing telephony platforms. So we definitely do believe in an open, inclusive integration mechanism with our customers. And uh, yes, we have a number of different startups who have you know, used the platform uh, we have Vin Intelligence, for example, who's doing a video contact center use case for some of their industrial customers and utility customers. Uh, but we also have, you know, very interesting use cases like in the gaming space. Uh, you know, uh, we one of the Wizards of the Coast, for example, uses mm. the service today to power, you know, audio communications for the Dungeons and Dragons uh, application. Right? Oh, that's so, so fun. Yeah, and so we we get some really in, Jam DG is another customer we, who's using us from a gaming perspective. So we we get a lot of very interesting applications and use cases uh, because of how open the platform is, how many different use cases it can support. Um, so I get to work with customers all the way from gaming to traditional enterprise contact center. Yeah, I, I saw one of the application areas of great interest was telehealth, which has just seen a surge in usage. And of course, Amazon entering the healthcare space. That must be an interesting domain for you to uh, support. Absolutely. We uh, we started in, this kind of, in the telehealth segment with Cerner. Cerner basically mm -hmm. supported uh, kind of that need for, um, you know, the one-to-one -one patient to doctor style engagement. We also have customers like EMED who built entire patient coordination reach out mechanism so you reach out to the customer via text and when a telehealth appointment is about to start or to remind them to schedule something then basically that leads to a chat conversation with their doctor which then leads to a full-fledged video session for the checkup so they built this like truly end-to-end -end telehealth wow. type of environment on top of the sdk um, so we all we're really looking at in the telehealth space now is how we can make that journey easier for our telehealth customers. So 
one of the things our team is working on is widgets and components that make it easy for these types of customers to uh, easier for these customers to deploy vertically specific use cases like telehealth or video contact center or some of those kinds of use cases and applications. Fantastic. So you must have a roadmap and a feature request list a mile long. How do you decide what to build and when and how when you have this vast landscape at uh, AWS of customers, features, requirements? Must be a fun job. <laughs> oh, it, it, it certainly is. We uh, And yes, we do have a roadmap list that's a mile long. Uh, because of the diversity of use cases and workloads that the app, you know, that the SDK powers. Uh, well, we, we're a very customer obsessed organization within Amazon. So mm-hmm. our goal is always to work backwards. So, um, you know, we're not really looking at say what the substitutes are doing or what the competition or alternatives are doing. Our okay. focus is truly on the customer. And so when I look at my roadmap, I prioritize my road, roadmap about unblocking customers and unblocking the, uh, you know, their usage of AWS services overall. And by the way, Evan, that's something important to keep in mind. It's not just about my service. I have to look out for AWS overall as a leader within AWS. So, uh, so for example, we supported the ability for Lexbox to be in, you know, integrated into an existing SIP telephony platform in March. We rolled that out in Enterprise Connect this year. And, uh, you know, the why did we do that? It wasn't necessarily to just drive usage of the software development kit. No, it was around making sure our enterprise customers had a way to integrate Lex into their existing platforms without, you know, any kind of switching cost or platform, you know, modification cost. And uh, we had a number of customers asking for that, and the Lex team had had, had limited ways to offer that to customers until we launched that. Um, and so it was very much a customer driven use case of how do we get conversational AI from Amazon Lex, which a lot of customers want to use because of security reasons, primarily, Evan. Um, and that's why we prioritize getting that done in our roadmap is to help customers overall, help AWS overall, and help the Amazon Lex team be successful with their customers. Fantastic. Yeah, I love the focus on customers. Everyone speaks lip service to that, but you guys seem to live and breathe it, which is fantastic. Um, So you've all been buttoned down. We've all been buttoned down through the pandemic. You managing to get out, travel at at all over the next, uh, you know, weeks and months to customers and regions? Absolutely. I, you know, still a lot of work is happening remotely with our customers and, uh, but we are starting to get out and run user groups, for example, within cities um, for developer communities that are using our platform. Um, you know, we are doing those customer workshops now with immersion days and things of that nature yeah. in person so that they can, you know, really learn about the SDK and how they can extend their existing platform uh, and, and services that they have. Um, so yes, we, we definitely are getting out there more and definitely collaborating more in person. But we're also pretty cognizant that hybrid work is pretty much here to stay. And, Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and that, you know, when we think about our roadmap now, we have customers like CVET who are doing event-based platforms where they actually have to support in-person and virtual environments. And the SDK is a crucial part of that support for both an in-person room with the multi-party audio video that you expect from a hybrid environment. So, Yes, we, hybrid's here to say we, we really, uh, we consider that when we think about our roadmap and we think about how we can innovate on behalf of our customers. Fantastic. Um, I love the use cases and the customer stories. It just seems so innovative. And just last question, you've been at Amazon for a long time. It's a pretty intense place to work, AWS in particular. How do you unwind? How do you disconnect uh, and uh, huh. and relax these days. Any any particular uh, hobbies that you want to share with the viewers before we leave? Sure, sure. Yeah, actually, I you know I I, I have two puppies that uh, occupy quite a bit of my life. I'm a dog lover. <laughs> I, did, I, and... I did see those on your LinkedIn profile. Very clever marketing. I love that. <laughs> yes, and so you know I you know I do take care of my puppies. Uh, you know, they're, I do unwind watching, uh, you know, I, I have become an, you know, aficionado of various different streaming programs and things of that nature. But yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I actually love history and English history these days. Uh, I've become quite, uh, quite uh, a fan of Tudor history specifically. So I, I, I've been, that, those are the areas that I've been uh, 
basically unwinding and 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 looking into after I get out of work. But I am truly passionate about the space seven, and yeah, it, it is pretty cons- it's pretty consuming for me. I I we do obsess about how we can help customers from a communication perspective. So it does. Uh, occupy a lot of my brain power and and neural space if that's the right way to use it so uh, and uh so well, the dogs we, it, will it is grounded so very very that's nice, right very fun that's very right. fun well, well thanks for sharing just a brief uh, update i look forward uh, to all your news announcements and roadmap in the upcoming months fantastic stuff thanks it thank you good, good to see you it. good to see Bye-bye. you take care